Welcome back to this series where we're talking about games we would pick and play in our game room in 2022 for old consoles. Today is the PlayStation 3, a console that still in 2022 looks amazing. The good old Sony PlayStation 3. This console was pretty cool, but I was a 360 kid, so I didn't play it a lot when it came out, but I'm playing it a lot in 2022, and there's a lot of sweet games for the PS3. We're gonna attempt getting through 10 amazing PS3 games that we're still playing in 2022 in 10 minutes or less. Let's see if we can get this done. First game, digital download only, not exclusive to the PS3, but it's a game a lot of people missed, I think. And it's in the Contra franchise, but it doesn't have the Contra name on it. It's just called Hardcore Uprising. This game is badass if you love the Contra games. Visually, it's beautiful. The music is like heavy metal. I will say like the gameplay feels a little bit slower than the Contra games, but it's still really fast paced and fun, if that makes sense. It's run and gun, beautiful graphics, beautiful cutscenes, awesome boss fights, co-op, couch co-op, kind of a rare thing these days. This game is so awesome if you're a fan of Contra, Hardcore Uprising is a must play. You know we love our light gun games, the PS3 is actually a light gun hammer, if you will, because of the PlayStation Move, and if you have all that stuff to play light gun games on your PS3, you better have Time Crisis Raising Storm. You get two Time Crisis games, Time Crisis Raising Storm and Time Crisis 4, both amazing Time Crisis games, and then you get Dead Storm Pirates, which is a very unique on-rails pirate. It's ridiculous, but it's really fun. Raising Storm is not as good as Time Crisis 4, so that's why I'm happy they packed it in here, but it's definitely a must play for Time Crisis fans. This is an awesome collection if you're a fan of light gun games, and guys, the Time Crisis games are amazing, so duh. This next one's kind of a goofy one, NBA Jam On Fire Edition, and I don't think it's available via digital download on PS3 any longer, but if you already had it per our recommendation many, many moons ago, you would still have it installed on your PlayStation 3. NBA Jam On Fire Edition is amazing, but if you didn't download it, you can still nug out this bad boy, just the regular NBA Jam on PlayStation 3. I think this is my favorite NBA Jam game out of all of them, even the arcades, even the old school ones. This game is amazing. Visually, looks great. EA Sports got the rights. You would have thought they would have ruined it, but they didn't. This game is amazing. Tim Kitzrow's back at the helm. If you don't know who that is, that's the NBA Jam voice guy. He's on fire, boom shakalaka. Are you between the ages of 18 and 35? Do you still have game, or is your game in the lane lame? Well, maybe you should find out about Boom Shock Lock of Energy. That's right, if you want to dunk all night long like you did when you were 18 again, try Boom Shock Lock Energy now with Dunk It All. That's right, Dunk It All guaranteed to give you six extra inches of vertical. If you have a dunk lasting over six seconds, call Dr. J immediately because you just broke his record. Side effects include trash talking, phone at the mouth, and catching on fire. Boom Shock Lock The co op campaign story mode is incredible. You can do big head mode. The black top on some of like the things looks so cool. Dude, every time I play this game, I'm like, it looks great, it plays great. One of my favorite NBA Jam games ever made, if not the favorite, um, is according to me, my favorite uh, NBA Jam game is NBA Jam on Fire Edition. I've always played it on PS3. Twisted Metal, another franchise that hasn't been talked about in a while. And this is the last one in the series. This is one where I think this is my favorite in the series as well, Twisted Metal on the PS3. Twisted freaking Metal. Everybody remembers Twisted Metal really on the PlayStation 1. They had 1, 2, and 3. Then it was at Twisted Metal Black on PS2, all great games. And then it just kind of disappeared for a while. And then they brought it out on PlayStation 3. And I love this game. Now, it has got the battling and things that you're used to in Twisted Metal. But I think this game really thrives in its uh, narrative-driven story mode, uh, which seems kind of goofy for a Twisted Metal game, right? But it, it's it, they do a, a fantastic job. This game is gorgeous. This game is badass. This game is brutal. This co-op campaign in this game is ridiculous. But it's so much fun. We play this all the time. And the cutscenes and the story is like, oh my god. Like, it's vicious it's twisted metal check it out it's uh awesome underrated wrestling game now wrestling games are always hit or miss you know we love our old school wwf wwe stuff not enough people talk about this one right here wwe all-stars yes the game is over the top yes it's arcade wrestling action yes you can do flying elbow drops where you jump damn near off the screen but don't let all that chaos fool you. The fundamentals of this game are perfect. The character selections is pretty cool. You got some modern, some old people. 
Everyone is jacked. I think Macho Man has like a 14 pack. They're jumping off the ropes. It controls right in line with what you would expect if you were a WrestleMania 2000 NWO versus WCW Revenge, or even the SmackDown games. The, the controls are just intuitive. You got your grapple, strong grapple, weak grapple, strong attack, weak attack, and then the finishers are over the top. There's even, I think, some unlockable characters. This might be my favorite wrestling game of all time. I know it's ridiculous. I know there's not much depth to it, but it is just so much fun to get four people together and you're just freaking bouncing off the mat and flying up in the air. I just don't know why nobody ever talks about it. I think people look at it and they're like, that was made for kids. I don't know, maybe it was, but this kid really likes it. Call of Duty World at War. Why the heck are we playing Call of Duty? Not for the campaign, for Nazi zombies. If you want a dose of nostalgia, Throw this in and play the first map in Nazi Zombies and it will take you back to when this game came out and you played Nazi Zombies for the first time. Now, if memory serves me, this was the first game, I don't even see it on here, that Treyarch did. Infinity Ward had done the Mod Modern Warfare series. Treyarch comes in, they put out World at War. And at face value, I wasn't very into this game because I was like, ah, I don't want to play with those older guns. I'm used to Modern Warfare. But then they nugged in this game mode called Nazi Zombies. There's four different Nazi Zombie packs. We're playing all of them. I think the uh, last one, I don't remember what it's called, but you've got to turn on power and electricity and we cannot stop playing it. Nazi Zombies is so much fun. I know it's on other Call of Duty games, but we just are playing this one right now and it's incredible. Actually, before filming this episode, we were playing the hell out of it, just trying to get one round further, one round further, one round further. And the zombies have, happened and, and been in other Call of Duty games. Black Ops had had, had it and uh, some of the newer ones as well. But something about the original, back on World at War, is just the cream of the crop. So you guys know we love the Burnout series. We love arcade racers. Split second. This game is amazing. It's not Burnout level. So if you get it and think uh, it's not quite Burnout Revenge, you're right, it's not. It's not quite Burnout 3 Takedown. But this game is unique and it's very fun. The racing is very fluid. It's like an arcade racer. You're on a TV set for a show called Split Second. Split Second is incredible. The graphics, the visuals. Fun thing is, is you aren't really doing the destructing of your opponents yourself. You're blowing up these set pieces and timing them as they drive by. You have to power up through drifting and drafting, and then you can use these explosive tactics as they drive by. Bam, how you doing? A truck comes out, hits their car, knocks them out, you know, for a little bit, and then you can pass them. And it's just a lot of fun. You gotta get used to the mechanics. There is some learning curve because the drifting's a little bit weird, but once you get down, it just feels right. When you can time explosions and take people out or like crash into a bridge, it just feels so cool and I love how unique it is because it's like it's an arcade racer but it's on a set so it's kind of like Burnout meets Smash TV in a little bit, you know, because it's a TV show. Don't have anything to hold up for you here. Why? Because it's digital download only on the PS3 House of the Dead 4. I believe the only way to play this game is in the arcade or on the PS3 digital download with the PlayStation Move controllers. I'm sure there's people who have found ways to emulate it and whatnot, but from a home console perspective, that's very unique. This is such an awesome House of the Dead game that a lot of people I feel like don't talk about because you know, House of the Dead 2, House of the Dead original, incredible games. And House of the Dead 4 I think is kind of hard to find so people forget about it and this is one of my favorite House of the Dead games. PS3 actually is kind of a House of the Dead sleeper. You got four and I think you can get three on it as well. And then House of the Dead Overkill, Director's Cut or whatever is on there. Not a lot of people think of the old PlayStation 3 as a House of the Dead arcade device, but it is. God of War 3, a staple on the PS3. If you're talking PS3, you're gonna be talking about God of War sooner rather than later. This game is beautiful. This game is so badass. I've always thought three was kind of the apex. One, two, and then three just looked gorgeous. It was that updated PS3 graphics exclusive to the console. Not a lot of the games we've talked about today are exclusive. It doesn't matter. These are just games we're playing. Not a top 10, just the games we like playing right now in 2022. And God of War 3 is definitely up there. When you start this game, it throws you into the action. The graphics are over the top and visually it's like breathtaking and you're like, oh my, it feels like kind of in a movie, but it's a hack and sl God of War 3 is a must freaking play. Going back and playing it, it makes you kind of miss that old style. Not any, not throwing any shade at the new God of War on PS4, but it's more story driven. They really changed kind of the hack and slash element. Uh, they didn't completely reinvent the wheel, but if you've played it, you know what I'm talking about. Just a little different. God of War 3 is a breath of fresh air. Then the last game on our list is a collection. So is it a cop out? I don't know, but we're playing it. The Sly Cooper Collection. It includes one, two, and three. I've always thought this cell-shaded, like, cartoon art style 
stands the test of time very well. This game will never not look amazing. I don't know what else they could do. Even if they release it on modern consoles, it would just still look great. You don't need to really upgrade it. And this is, for me anyways, um, an awesome piece in our collection because you just have it all right there. This game is a great pickup if you want to get that Sly Cooper fix and it's HD. I know people complain about like the frame rate and the loading times are kind of rough, but the gameplay is still fun and it's still Sly Cooper and it's HD and you get all three games. It is going to run you a little bit. I think it's like a $25, $30 game, but if you haven't played the Sly games or you're just wanting to scratch that itch and play some Sly Cooper again in 2022, must own PlayStation 3 title. Did we do it? 10 minutes, 10 games. We're playing on PlayStation 3 in 2022. It is worth noting, we say it in every episode, but these are not top 10s. We always get things in the comments. Well, how did you have a top 10 list and not include this game? These are not top 10s. Um, you know, think about your top 10 NES games of all time. Their prior games like Mario 3 in there that you maybe aren't playing a ton in 2022 because you played the hell out of it in your lifetime. So that's why these games are on this list. They're the ones we're playing on PS3. But of course, if you've seen these videos before, there are honorable mentions. So let's talk about it. Uh, this first game is one of the first co-op games we played as a channel. It's so freaking good. You need to play it co-op though because the AI does suck if you do it single player and that's Resident Evil 5. This game is incredible. I love playing this game and co-op, it's the way to go. It's just, it's Resident Evil, so it's great. It's a great co-op romp on the PS3. It's a super, super cheap game. If you play this game co-op with someone, it kind of rises to being one of my favorite Resident Evil experiences that I've ever had. So it had to be an honorable mention, but I've just beat it so many times that I didn't want to, you know, I'm not playing it a ton, but what the holiday coming up, Halloween being um, the holiday I'm referencing, I, I might play this game again. Another one that falls right in line with uh, the Halloween time coming is um, Monster Madness, and nobody really talks about this game. Kind of a poor man's version, modern graphics, of course, of Zombies Ate My Neighbors, I feel like. It's like a top-down, beat-em-up survival. It's a great co-op game. It's kind of expensive, I think. I think it's getting up there a little bit, but Monster Madness is a lot of fun. This feels like Zombies Ate My Neighbors mixed with Gauntlet, if that makes sense. You know, it's top-down, it's kind of hack and slash, it's ridiculous. I will say, there are some issues, there are some, it is clunky, it, it, but it's fun, and that's all that matters. This game is ridiculous and just, it's over the top, but that's, I feel like, how some games should be, because it's just fun. They're video games. Another honorable mention would be Dragon's Crown. It's an Atlas game. It actually got re-released recently on some of the modern stuff. It was like the Definitive Edition, but Dragon's Crown on PS3 is how I played it. Uh, it's the only way I've ever played it. Another great co-op game. It's kind of a side-scrolling beat-em-up with some RPG elements. Not kind of, that's what it is. It's awesome. Great Atlas game. I always thought this game was gonna end up being really expensive and then they released that Definitive Edition. So it's actually pretty reasonable. You can get it for like 10 or 12 bucks, pretty easy. And if you haven't picked it up, that's one you should probably check out. Then the last game in our honorable mentions is a Smash Bros clone. Basically it's PlayStation's Battle Royale or All-Stars, whatever. This game is so awesome because it's Sony characters in a Battle Royale setting and you're fighting each other. When Robert and I started the channel, he always was yakking about this game he got this game it's playstation characters and he plays as like honey boo boo or something in it the, the girl character and i was like fat princess. fat princess that's it and uh then i started really liking the game every time i play i got to play as fat princess i don't even know what she's from i know she's a sony character i've never played whatever game she's in but i play as her every time when i play this game i don't know why i just think it's funny and i love winning as fat princess this game is just if you like smash bros and you like sony this game is a must play but anyway honorable mentions playstation 3 I just think it's so fun to collect for right now. Uh, the fat model obviously is the one everyone wants that's backwards compatible with everything, but even the slim models, you can find them everywhere for 40 to 50 to 60 bucks, pawn shops, thrift stores, garage sales. People are just saying, get rid of this shit. That time will cease to exist at some point, but right now in 2022, PS3 is so much fun. And if you can't get your hands on one of the new consoles, you'd be mighty fine, Porcupine playing the PlayStation 3. Let us know in the comments below, what games are you playing on the PS3 in 2022? And what console should we do next in this series? This series is so much fun. We've been playing a ton of games. We're getting down, we're getting down there. We've done a lot of these, but what console do you wanna see us do next? Let us know. We will see you next time, right here on the one and only Gaming Off The Grid.